everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am Larissa Brasusa. Uh, I am doing my postdoc at the University of Sydney, uh, exploring the learning dimensions of citizen science in schools. Uh, I completed my PhD last year uh, exploring the benefits of MOSI monitors, which is a citizen science mosquito surveillance program. It started in South Australia, but now it went national. And every year we are now running the MOSI month between February and March, which is the peak season of mosquitoes. And with the presentation today, uh, I am going to explore how we are trying to meet the dual goals of citizen science in terms of research and practice and also how we are working to align MOSI monitors into the school curriculum. So uh, first I'd like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land where we are meeting today, the Gabi Gabi people, and to pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Also I'd like to acknowledge the Gadiko people of the Eora Nation where we are working now at the University of Sydney and also the Ghana people uh, where I work for four years uh, doing this work at the University of South Australia. Uh, yeah, such a rich and cultural experience. Uh, so we all know that there are a lot of benefits for bringing citizen science uh, into schools and research has shown up for those benefits in schools in different countries, especially we saw some papers from the United States, from Finland, where the students could learn like uh, animal behavior from like checking bird nests throughout different seasons in the United States or in Finland, sorry, Iceland, uh, there was a citizen science project monitoring urban rats and over time uh, teachers and researchers they realized that students decreased the negative feelings towards rats after realizing they're actually important for the environment and you know like they could explore different aspects of public health but also biodiversity so there are a lot of different uh, topics and skills that a student can learn from engaging citizen science but so far we don't have much research done in australia to explore those learning benefits in a national scale so that's what we are trying to do with learning by doing uh, we are funded by the Department of Education in New South Wales and our main goal in this program is that we want to every, every school kid in Australia to have the opportunity to engage in citizen science. Uh, I was watching a presentation yesterday and somebody said something I'll never forget and I think it was amazing. Uh, I don't remember who said that but it was amazing. They said not every kid is going to become a, an astrophysicist but every kid can be a citizen science for the rest of their lives. And <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember this forever. And I think it aligns with uh, what we are doing with the learning by doing. Uh, in the first two years of program, we started in 2021. Uh, so we had some honors students interviewing uh, teachers and citizen science leaders in Australia. And they asked them about their experiences with running citizen science in schools. And those teachers and citizen science facilitators, they said that students could learn uh, with purpose and also they could learn about the scientific method, not only looking at the scientific results, but learning about the method, how to test, how to compare different methods, and also the importance of a citizen scientist to upscale scientific research. So from that perspective, that was very uh, meaningful and also help the teachers to, to reach uh, some of the curriculum outcomes. Uh, so the Learning by Doing team started in 2021. And as Jen was just sharing with us, uh, the team has been doing an amazing work with engaging, uh, especially high school kids in public health and citizen science or social science and citizen science, uh, engaging students to make molecules that could be used for uh, drug discovery for, as part of a breaking good and also essential medicines uh, learning about you know, medicines throughout the world and the availability of those medicines and uh, it has been running for since 2020 right and I joined learning by doing last year when I had just finished my PhD with the mouse and monitors and that's how we decided to bring all this expertise within the field of public health and 
biodiversity as well of mosquitoes, uh, to run some pilot programs. Uh, we had some experience running pilot projects of mouse monitors in South Australia, in a school in South Australia and in a school in Tennant Creek in another territory. So we wanted to bring mouse monitors into New South Wales as well and also explore how we students can learn about mosquitoes and mosquito-borne diseases. So mouse monitors started uh, in the University of South Australia in 2018. So it has been running for five years now. Uh, there are two methods to get involved with mouse monitors. They can either use a mosquito trap, uh, yes, which we can see uh, on those images here. So they can set up the mouse trap in the backyards or in the schoolyards. Uh, they check the trap just once uh, every fortnight. So the mosquitoes are collected into this uh, transparent chamber here. Uh, so then mouse monitors or the citizen scientists, they can place the mosquitoes on a specific tip card, which now we use the blue color, which is the best color for uh, IDs. And then they send the photos to us for identification. So the project has been running this way for five years. But what we're trying to do with the schools now, it is to adapt a little bit of those methods and get the students to do the IDs as well. So they can develop a different skills and also help with the upscaling and sustainability of the Mosin Monitors project. Oh, sorry, and there, there is also uh, another way to get involved, which is using the iNaturalist uh, platform, either web-based or using a mobile phone app. So they can also take photos of mosquitoes. And actually, two years ago, in 2021, we found out a new species of mosquito in Australia uh, from people participating in the mouse monitors that was here in Queensland, in Cape York. Uh, so a new species was discovered uh, on wine naturalist. Uh, that was the first time it was observed in Australia and second time it was observed in the whole world. Only observed before in Papua New Guinea uh, almost 100 years ago. So from using a naturalist, we could, you know, like we added a new species of mosquito to the mosquito list in Australia. Uh, okay, so what we are doing with mouse monitors now? Uh, we have a lot of people participating from different states and territories in Australia, but we only had uh, two schools participating, one in South Australia and one in another territory. Now we are recruiting new schools from New South Wales, but also from other states to participate. Uh, in New South Wales, we are trying to run the research part, uh, analyzing you know, before and after and to see what students can learn. but. If schools from every state and territory can join and you know download our resources or get a mosquito trap with us and participate in the program. Uh, we are using the uh, Australian curriculum to first map how uh, the skills and the methods that we use with mouse monitors, they are already aligned with the school, but we are also adapting methods uh, to align with the curriculum. So here I'm going to share some of the resources we have developed. Uh, we developed now eight lesson plans uh, to run during Mosa Month between February and March. I'm not sharing the eight of them because just because of time, so I'm sharing a clip of three different lesson plans. Uh, these are some of the descriptors of the curriculum that are already aligned with Mosa Monitors, uh, especially when we look at year five and year seven. Uh, we know that the students are learning about uh, life cycles of different uh, living things. Uh, adaptations of uh, fauna and flora to the environment, the relationship between different species, uh, how to make the, uh, predictions and how to describe some of those scientific uh, patterns that they are observing. Uh, and also year seven, they are also learning how to use uh, dichotomous uh, keys to identify species. So that's also part of uh, mouse and monitors method. So that's an example of uh, ah, yeah. how Mosey Monitors is already aligned with some of the descriptors in the curriculum, especially science understanding. Uh, we are looking at, you know, like, including some exercises for the students to learn how to identify mosquitoes and other invertebrates, what makes a mosquito a mosquito, so uh, how to differentiate the different species. Uh, also, we included some exercises and some questions uh, to work on like, science as a human endeavor. 
Uh, so we wanted the teachers and the students to explore their own role as citizen scientists. So how can they play a role in improving mosquito surveillance in Australia? How can they play a role in uh, addressing public health issues in their local areas? How they can prevent mosquito-borne diseases by getting involved in this kind of citizen science initiatives? Uh, and also discussing like throughout uh, the years, you know, how uh, we as a society, we are helping to improve uh, science and when we work together, when we bring our local contextual knowledge to the scientific method. And finally, we are also exploring some science inquiry skills, uh, especially this, having this conversation and discussion about the impact of mosquito-borne diseases in human populations. Uh, so that's an example. We have three examples of lesson plans. So lesson plan number one, for example, uh, we are exploring how to differentiate mosquitoes from other invertebrates, but also exploring life cycle of mosquitoes. Uh, so we have a, an exercise, a taxonomic exercise, where we prepared some laminated cards uh, with a different invertebrates for the students and, teacher, whoops, and teachers to discuss. So for example, is this a mosquito? Or is this a mosquito? Why these are not mosquitoes? And this one is a mosquito. So we're going, yes, mosquitoes have six legs. Mosquitoes have a proboscis, you know. So we are exploring this in the first lesson learning how to differentiate from other invertebrates and also oh my god sorry <laughs> and also uh looking at the life cycles how to differentiate uh, to identify mosquito larvae and pupa and differentiating from other larvae from other species uh, every lesson plan presents a uh, this template that is easily adaptable to the needs of the teacher so we we provide some examples of introduction and a hook to start the discussion with the students. We provide some resources and some links that the, the teachers can use, like show a video of how to set up a mosquito trap or show a video of uh, how mosquitoes bite. Uh, but if the schools don't have like all these resources or if the teachers have a limited time, uh, they can adapt or they can you know, decide not to use one another resources we are uh, offering. Uh, so the trap, when they set the trap, they check just once every fortnight. So these lesson plans, they show opportunities to check the mosquito trap throughout six weeks, but also use iNaturalist on the weeks they are not checking the trap. So they are testing different skills. And at the end of the final, like the week number eight, we are also comparing the results with the students like, what they could observe using a naturalist, what they could collect using a trap, what was the uh, metrics of success when they are you know, trying to monitor mosquitoes, uh, how these different methods can result in different out outcomes. Uh, so yeah, we are also running these uh, mosquito keys, identification keys with these students. Uh, at the end of the week eight, uh, we are also as an opportunity of assessment for the teachers and also trying to explore different and creative ways to improve science communication uh, and to improve understanding of all these different species of mosquitoes they will be collecting throughout these eight weeks. Uh, we invite students to build at their own choice an inventory of mosquitoes, a citizen science derived inventory of mosquitoes in Australia. It could be a book, it could be pamphlets, it could be posters, uh, so they can use their creativity and try to create different ways to communicate what kind of species they found in their schools, what kind of mosquito-borne diseases are related to these, these mosquitoes they trapped or they took photos using a naturalist. Uh, we will be running these trials uh, in the first semester, Term 1, in 2024. Uh, again, that will be part of Mosley Month, which is already a national program in Australia. But now for the first time, we are actually aligning this to the uh, curriculum expectations uh, in Australia. If you are interested, if you are in New South Wales, we would love to have you participating in our research aspect, where we will you know, like run some surveys with the students and analyze a before and after uh, engagement. If you are not in New South Wales, you can still be part of Mosley Month. 
uh, we can send you a mosquito trap and we can have a disconnection on natural list. We can create a project for your own school to see the mosquito fauna in your own school throughout the time. So yes, if you're interested, you can reach out to us and you can register by email or you can scan the QR code. We have other uh, workshops available as well. So we are happy to yeah, talk about them. And yeah, I'd just like to acknowledge my team. Uh, we had all these amazing people participating, learning by doing. Uh, Professor Craig Williams from the University of South Australia. And we also had Kira and Sim, who did their honors in with the Learning by Doing project, interviewed the teachers, interviewed citizen science leaders, and John uh, Martin, who was also one of the co-founders of Learning by Doing, and he has run a few BioBlitz activities, uh, bird watching activities uh, with school kids in New South Wales, and our amazing scope team as well. And Professor, Associate Professor Alice Motion, I'm sorry, <laughs> who is the force behind uh, Learning by Doing. Thank you very much, and I'd like to take any questions. Do we have some questions for Larissa? First of all, I think you have to be congratulated for the work you're doing and to be um, just almost ahead of the game developing these programs um, that fit so nicely with the, with the latest version of the school curriculum. That's a, re a really big deal. So um, congratulations for that and thank you. And we've got a mic just coming up to the back. Thanks, Larissa. That's a great, um, great program. How do you sometimes you see that citizen science and universities aren't necessarily a neat fit? So how do you find that intersection, particularly because you're doing a lot of non-research based outcomes in your work I agree <laughs> it, it, it is really challenging uh, when we started Muslim for example we talk about Muslim monitors which I worked for four years during my PhD when we started Muslim monitors we didn't design Muslim monitors thinking about schools we started as a pilot project in South Australia so we had people uh, actually donating money for the program it was a crowdfunding uh, project uh, so we pilot Muslim monitors in school for the first time two years ago in South Australia but we didn't have uh, clear goals of what we were expecting from schools we were having the schools participating the whole school like the whole students part all the students participating as one participant of Muslim monitors, you know, like we we're collecting data, uh, but we we're not actually looking at how it would benefit the school. So uh, I think that's challenging when we don't have like a very multidisciplinary team or like a lot of people working together. Uh, so I think with collaborations, uh, you know, like we can try to address uh, different challenges in, in terms of citizen science engagement. So like. The first couple of years of Muslim Monitors, we were looking at the feasibility of the program and how to improve the data collection. But in the second phase of Muslim Monitors, we started to look, oh, what people can learn about it. But we looked at, you know, like overall participants, but we didn't look at schools. And now in this stage, after, you know, like learning all these lessons, we are trying to adapt it to schools and get the information of what students can learn from Muslim Monitors. So, yeah, I think it's challenging in terms of money, resources, time, and to have clear goals uh, since the beginning of what we expect from the program in terms of like collecting data for citizen science, but what we expect in terms of engagement, how we can benefit citizen scientists as well. So I think having these clear goals since the beginning, or maybe changing the goals, but like having more people on board to work with us, I think it is, yeah. It is the way to get started, maybe. <laughs> Great question, thank you. Um, have you got your uh, lesson plans online at the moment, or is that something that you're going to do in the future? Yeah, we still have to upload them to the website because we have been 
changing a little bit talking to uh, an experienced educational designer to adapt this to year five and year seven because they have different um, contents and expectations in the curriculum so we are uploading two different pack packages of lesson plan uh, but yeah it will be on the website in the next couple of weeks to be downloaded easily downloaded Is, sorry, I have a question, just a quick question. Um, more so, is the reasoning, what was the reasoning behind doing just the school system? So like doing, um, uh, I forget the word I just knew, um, doing at home, community, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Homeschooling, yes. Why, what was the difference balance? Was there a reasoning for you to only go target towards school systems and not towards homeschooling groups? Or is there an interest in expanding your work to homeschool groups? Uh, sorry, are you asking if we engage the homeschooling in the program? Have you or uh, are you interested in uh, exploring that? That's a great question, we didn't think about it, actually to get it started, uh, because we are funded by the government of New South Wales, uh, by the Department of Education, we are forced on looking at engaging public schools, uh, because we are also like looking at the, like, the research aspect of citizen science, so like we wanted to have like interview teachers after their engagement with, uh, uh, with the program, have uh, this before and after survey with the students. We are running focus groups with the parents of those students to see if it's actually uh, trans translated, you know, like in the dinner conversations, if they are bringing these skills or like conversations to home. Uh, so initially, we didn't think about homeschooling. We, we initially designed the program thinking of pu public schools. Uh, yeah, because that aligns with uh, the funding as well. Uh, but I think that would be great to think about it and to design and maybe adapt to a different different context. Thank you. I was just a little bit curious about where whether there are researchers who are using the data that's being collected by all of these schools that are leveraging all of that data on mosquito species and numbers. Um, because I know a lot of students are often thinking about where does their data go? Mm. Does anybody, can anyone really use it as well? Yes, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, with the Mozzie Monitors, we have been running for almost five years now. So every, you know, we have a technical report with the results from, you know, like Mozzie Month between February and March. Uh, we have a few publications as well, scientific publications of Mozzie Monitors in the last couple of years, what we found out in different states and territories in Australia. With the schools, we will be running for the first time, like looking at how schools are collecting mosquitoes. We will be doing that next year for the first time as a pilot. Uh, what students can have with this real-time information is online naturalists, so they can check all the mosquito species in their schools. Uh, but we will also provide a report at the end of Mosin Month to all the schools who are part which are participating in the program. So they will have the technical report. And I hope in the future we can also publish this data in like scientific papers so they can see uh, how applicable it is for public health and biodiversity. Um, but yeah, we also have like some past publications, for example, discovering new species of mosquito in Australia. That's something we, we make available on the information, like when you know, we are delivering the lesson plans. So the students can see like, well, everybody can play a role in discovering new species or discovering new behaviors of mosquitoes. Not necessarily we discover new species every week, but you know, we can find out more about animal behavior or interactions with other species uh, if we get involved, so, yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Larissa. And can I just say that I think that sharing that data is a real point of difference um, to, to give that data back to the school group so they can see see, um, well, data in action, how it's being used. So thank you for doing that. It's amazing. Thank you again.